Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today I'm going to take you along and show you how I actually make my tropical donut bath bombs with the beautiful glazing on top. And they were going to look just like this. So look how sweet these look. So I'll show you how I do this. I'll give you my bath bomb recipe and I'll also give you the recipe for the glazing. Um, it's really not hard. It's just about your process and making sure that you're organized. So for this, you're going to need a few ingredients. Of course, you will need bicarbonate soda. Um, so make sure you do have that. You'll need some citric acid, some SLSA, where I also put kaolin clay in mine as well. Um, everyone is different what they put in. You don't need to put that in if you don't want to, but I do advise it because it does add a beautiful silky bath. Um, you will also need some fragrance oil, some colorants, some cocoa butter, and so on but like I said down in the description will definitely be um, my full um, video as well and if you think my uh, mixture is too big for the batch you want to do you can just simply halve um, exactly what I do so this is a big batch of over 2,000 grams um, but like I said you can definitely halve it or quarter it if you want to make something small this one will make roughly about 24 bath bombs um, and of course I'm a business so I do make them in bigger batches but anyway let's go let's have some fun and make something really really fun let's go hey everyone it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery today is one of those crazy days of making hundreds and hundreds of bath bombs but I thought I'd take you along why I'm making this absolutely beautiful tropical one so what I'm going to be doing is doing some donuts um, in a beautiful tropical mango. So the scent I actually have is mango um, from Pure Candle Supplies in Australia. So they're, they're out in Chernside Park in Victoria. So you can't, they do actually have a little warehouse. So you can go out there and um, see their products if you like. I'll leave all the links below. And then, of course, I have this beautiful, um, gorgeous sort of a mango-y orange color that I'm doing my bath bombs in. So I've already started doing a few. I have actually added, unfortunately, a little bit too much liquid, so it's a bit wet, but it's okay for today. If ever you um, have that sort of problem, you put too much water in, don't stress, just keep doing this. And what it will actually do is it will literally pop the air through it. It will dry it out a little bit, which is what I've been doing. And um, it's fine. You can definitely save it. So I often have people say, oh, no, I've put too much water. What do I do? If you do that, definitely just keep doing this because if you don't and you make it and it's too wet, number one, it will stick and it just won't come out. Number two, um, the biggest problem is cracks. You can get cracks in your um, bath bombs, but don't stress too much. And then after these are done, what I'm going to do is let them dry out for a number of hours and then I will come and dip them as well. So what I'm going to be doing is dipping them in a glaze so then they look like an absolutely delicious um, glazed donut. I'm not sure what colour I'm going to do the glazing on the top. I did think should I just keep it orange or should I keep it pink or yellow. I may even do a yellow because that's really tropical and fun and then we can also do a drizzle on top of that as well but but I will give you the recipe for both the bath bombs that I use and also um, for the glazing that I use. So it's really important to practice and practice um, on your bath bombs. Um, I make mine in one to 2,000 um, bicarb mixes. So usually like this one here I've got is like 2,000 um, grams of um, bicarb, which of course is two kilos, and then one kilo of your citric acid. And then this one I decided to add extra SLSA so that it's really super foaming, super fun. So when somebody has a bath in this, it's gonna be so relaxing. Also have some Epsom salts in here as well. Lots of people will tell you don't use Epsom salts. It will um, attract moisture. Yes, it does. But honestly, I've never, ever had a problem with um, Epsom salts um, with mine. So you definitely can use it. Um, don't feel scared to use it, but just use a small amount. And you can feel the difference in the bath because it gives it a really nice silky kind of feel. Also, um, I have some goat's milk in here as well. Some kaolin clay, some jojoba oil. Um, and some sweet almond oil along with a few extras and of course some mica to create this color because I don't want the bath to be bright orange 
Um, a lot of my ladies that buy from me and gents as well are older and they actually just want a nice bath that smells beautiful um, but they just don't want the colour. So not everyone wants the colour so not all my bath bombs have that crazy colour inside and these ones definitely do not have that. So anyway, um, like I said, we'll get making these um, as well. Like I said, I have already started. And what I'm going to be using today, which you can see I already started because the stuff's inside, this is my donut mold. So what I actually have is a hand press. I don't have an electric press. And I really don't want one. I've never really thought that I really need one. The whole thought of having the whole generator and everything else just turns me off. But anyway, so this, all I've got is my round circle here that you can see. And then this comes into this as well. So you just slot it inside here. And the one thing that I love about this is, you know, when you have the two um, normal bits that, you know, you have. So say you have, you know, your normal um, bath bomb mold. You've got to have those two. And then you've got to force it together and push it together. This way, the good thing is, all you've got to do is literally pop, pop all of your mixture in the top here. So this is all I'm going to do is literally pop it in the top just like that. And then you get the third piece and it just sits on top. So it is so much easier than trying to juggle them and force them together. And then all you do is this needs to be pressed. And then I do have a machine that I'll press it in. But I will put the camera down in a minute so that you can just see um, exactly what I'm doing. And then I just press it out of here. And then all we're going to do is smooth along the outside. So we just literally um you know take all this sort of mess off the side because you don't want that because this is what this little line that you can see here so if you build it up a tiny bit that little line is what is going to give you the satin ring that people are after so basically when you're using these you need extra um you just need a little bit extra mixture which i put here that's why i piled it a tiny bit high and then it will give you this satin ring if you're selling these wholesale in particular and you want them perfect definitely weigh each time. So weigh them and then you'll know that everyone's going to be 100 grams or whatever. For me, I don't worry about that because I make so many. I know they're all very, very similar. Um, and all we're going to do is just tap around the outside. Because my mixture is a little bit wetter than I would usually do, I do give it quite a big tap. Pull off the top and you can see, look how beautiful that looks in there. And if you can see those tiny little dots, that is because of Epsom salts. If I didn't do Epsom salts, it'd be really smooth, but um, I do put the Epsom salts in because some people want it, but some of my bath bombs will not have it in. But anyway, these ones, I definitely thought I'll put them in. And then all I do is get my tray, which you can see I've already started to do some. And then I'm literally going to flip this upside down and I'll show you. So I've set it on the tray and then all we're going to do is you just squeeze the sides a tiny bit and release it very carefully and there you go it's all on the tray look how cute that looks so anyway i'll pop down um i'll pop down the camera and i'll keep making these and i'll keep going along the way and i'll take you on the little ride for me if you like and then after i do these like i said i'll let them dry a bit and then we're going to do the next bit which i'll come back late this evening um, and then I can dip them in, you know, and just let them sit for a while. But generally, if you're going to dip them, um, you know, like I said, into the glazing that we're going to make later on, usually you would let them dry. So you want these to be quite dry. If they're a bit wet and I'll know if they're wet, you can feel them because they'll be cold. Um, then I'll actually leave them to the next day. So usually I'll leave them to the next day. But I have so many to get out and um, make because this weekend we have had 25% off um on our store every now and then we'll be doing that so um but we might actually do like a members one where our members will get some um discounts as well so if you haven't make sure you go over to our website and sign up onto our website so we do have a newsletter and in the newsletter we will actually be doing discounts regularly but only for our people in the newsletter so you need to be on it to, to get it don't you so um but you know generally everyone knows when we're gonna have a discount on anyway and the newsletter you won't get very many at all it'll be maybe once a month we haven't even started sending the newsletters out yet but um, we will get on to that soon enough anyway but if you want to know my website it's www.nelsonsopery.com and that's it no au just dot com and um, we send all over the world so not just in Australia all over the world um, but yeah so anyway we'll see and um, how much fun is this I mean 
Oh, it feels so beautiful. And it's actually quite relaxing and soothing, you know, to do this. I don't mind at all. But anyway, like I said, I'll pop the camera down and you can keep watching me um, go with making these gorgeous tropical mango um, donuts. So let me go. I'll pop this down. So hopefully you can see in front of me. And I'm sorry my bench is messy, but everyone knows I keep it real and I show it as it is. You know, honestly, being... Um, a soap maker or a bath bomb maker you know someone creative like me it's a messy business so anyway as you can see like i showed you before just you know roughly pile it in here don't pile it up too much and then we're just going to be popping that on there and we'll pop this aside this is the bath bomb press so all you do is push, pick this up and push it and then this little white disc is going to just compact it a bit further so all you do is push it lightly with your hand. There's nothing exciting to it, you know. And I have this little bit of tape that I'm pushing it out with. I actually do have the proper tool to push it out with, but I can't find it and I just couldn't be bothered looking for it um, in my studio here because I already had the mix going. So I thought, oh, well, I'll find it next time. But, you know, if you don't have the push tool, you can use something like that anyway and, um, and pop it out. So like I said, we'll just tap it. You do need to give it a good tap if it's too wet. If it's not wet, you just need to tap it a little bit. Don't tap on the top either, because if you tap the top, you're compacting it more and you're not actually releasing it. So um, yeah, but as I said, it's really, really important to do that. And all I'm gonna be doing is showing you here, like look how cute that looks. And then I'm just gonna turn it, like I said, onto the tray. And when it's on the tray, you just squeeze it a little and it will come off. And once again, just pop that in there. Like I said, keep mixing in between as well. Don't just let it sit there. Do keep mixing it to loosen it all up. Even if it's not as wet as I've made my mix today. Because um, I was playing with a new recipe as well. Like I have my standard recipe, but I really wanted this to be like a real foaming one. So this one has a lot more SLSA and um, just a little bit less um, citric acid in it. So it will foam more than fizz, but it will definitely fizz. Um, but yeah, like I said, and then all we're going to do is tap it again and literally get it to release. And there you go. Like, look how smooth and clean and gorgeous that looks. Like, it looks so pretty. And But like I said, we will actually be glazing these as well. And we'll just release them from that and we'll keep going and you know that your mixture is good when you look at this and see how smooth it is there's nothing stuck whereas sometimes if you can see the bottom how that got stuck when it was wet that is really wet and it's no good so that that's actually your reason why uh, that's actually a really good kind of um you know good test i guess to show you exactly what's what's right and what's not and, you know, if you do this as well, you might decide, well, we'll do some round ones, which I may actually do some round ones because I've done quite a few of these ones. Um, and my round ones sell really, really well. The same thing, I use the same machine. I just have a different mould for the round ones, which I'll show you that one in a second. We'll just tap these, get this one out. And like I said, comes out nice and easy. Um, and don't be too worried about it either, you know. If you mess it up, just tip it back in and start with the next one. So maybe we'll do one more of these and then I will start on the circle. And I'll show you exactly how I do my circle one as well. Once you do a few, you'll get really fast at it as well and it doesn't take long before you can do a whole set of them. I try not to do like 40 or 50 or anything of these in a row because you just don't want bath bombs sitting there for too long either. Like you literally want them sold within a few months. Don't let them just sit. Anyway, so I've done those ones. So I will show you this is it here. So these ones are all done on there. And now we're going to be doing these. So this is the same thing. So you've got the shaft here 
and then this is just the top just pop that in and you can see it's sealed here and then when you push it up that's what's pushing it up at the bottom there so the same thing all we're going to be doing is just filling this one up you know don't fill it up too much just like that is pretty good pop the top on and pop it into your machine it's exactly the same process as the donut one and then we just push it through here and the same thing we just tap around the edges take the top off and look how gorgeous it is beautiful so now i've just got to go and find my little silicon container which i put them on because that way it will, won't have um a flat bottom i make sure it keeps a round bottom by the way i actually pop them on trays anyway that's it for now i'll come back um in the i'll come back not so long time and then we will actually get on to making um like i said the glaze for it and we'll go from there i'll be back soon I thought I'd bring you back just for a minute just to show you how I actually do um, the round ones so you can see them here on this little tray if you can see it's just a cupcake tray with a little plastic um, over the top so just some glad wrap or some shrink wrap I've actually shrink wrapped mine and um, yeah and then all I'm going to do is so you've got see that I've got this one here that's all ready and I'm just going to turn it upside down and it literally just falls straight into the tray and i'll show you so then you just pick them up and look how cute they are and it actually stops the bottoms all um being flat so that way they basically just float on the top of um this particular tray and it makes it so much easier so and this is all just in probably a few minutes doesn't take long maybe 10 minutes to do this and um yeah they won't won't take long at all to be ready anyway like i said i'll bring you back when we do the glazing all right everyone so let's get started in front of me i do have lots of bath bombs but we're just going to be doing the orange ones and then i also have some of the little ball ones so i'll do those as well and i did have a practice with the little fishies but they're for my daughter so we won't be doing those ones so now the thing to remember as well cocoa butter when it melts so if you're doing um, a market fair this could melt so do keep that into consideration to be really honest i do take mine even in summer to the markets and i've never had any that have been a disaster that have um you know melted totally so don't worry about that so in here as you can see we do have our cocoa butter in here it's totally melted and make sure you don't do it too hot because you could actually burn it so just for the video's sake i'm just going to move a couple of these out the way and um and so we're just going to be adding in like i said um our baking soda in here so just slowly add it in and you will actually start to notice um the thickness so you know you don't want it too thin if it's too thin what will happen is when you actually um mix all of your um you know when you sort of start to mix the bath bombs sorry i'll start again um yeah don't have it too thin because when you actually have this um, particular mixture too thin, it will look transparent on the bath bomb. So that's one thing that you definitely don't want. And you need to keep mixing it to make sure you've got all the lumps and bumps out. And I can see that this mixture here is perfect. It's exactly what we want. It's a little bit thick. It's kind of like medium gravy, I guess you would say. Um, but yeah, so definitely don't have it too thin, which I've done that before. And they can look really good until they dry and then they dry like this terrible transparent kind of um, look. So we definitely don't want that. So now I'm just going to get the colour. So I'm going to be using this one here, which I think is called um, John Lemon. And um, this one here is from Sud Off. It's just a mica, a cosmetic grade and um, like just a little teaspoon or something is enough. You might actually want less. It depends on what you want. But for this one here, I actually want mine to be, you know, quite yellow because this is a tropical kind of bath bomb. So we do want it to be a little bit of fun. And this can be a top layer and then you can actually add a different layer later on. And what I actually do is I will use the same one. So I'll mix this, make sure it's smooth. And then once I've popped it on all my bath bombs, whatever is left, if I have enough, I use that as a drizzle and I just add like a little extra mica um, in orange or whatever color I was going to use 
so i think it is fairly good we'll just like i said make sure all these lumps and bumps are out um if you can definitely sift the baking soda that you're putting in i was a bit lazy for the video and i didn't do it but um that's fine i'm mixing it quite well so i'm not sort of worried about that so we'll pop the spoon aside and literally all we're going to be doing is just holding the um bath bomb in our hands and with these you can kind of put your hand in the circle if you want just to hold it and hopefully it fits in here because usually i do a bigger mix and i don't think it's going to so i may have to come up with another plan might i yeah let me get another container and so you know you kind of want it in a flat container like this one's really good if i had it high and i could just kind of balance it but i don't want to drop um you know the particular bath bombs obviously in it so let me find a container and take two and i'll come back for the next bit all right i've popped it into this little container so that we can do our little bath bombs and it is thickening up sad for me so i'm just going to be um popping it in so then what you do is just shake it around to get any bits off and that way you won't get too many dribbles and too many issues so this is not working either is it because i don't have enough all right everyone we are back again take two which is a little funny isn't it really i did try and put it in a bigger container but um then you know the bottom was too big and i just didn't want to use too much so i've just added some more cocoa and some baking soda just to thicken it up and you can see how thick it is it's not too thick not too thin i have done my little tester here so all we're going to be doing is like i said just holding the bath bomb and dipping it in and then just let a little bit sort of drip off and then just turn it around and look how cute that looks so they really do look so sweet um and like i said the hardest thing is the container like you really want a flat one like to be honest this one's not very good i really should have had this one flatter but I actually couldn't find one that sort of fit the amount that I wanted to pop into it. Um, but, you know, and then if you want to put sprinkles on, you would sprinkle that on now. But I'm not going to do that because I am actually going to be doing, um, like I said, just sort of like an orange drizzle on top as well. If you want to put like, like I said, hundreds and thousands or anything, you can do that. Or even if you want to put, um, you know, like some little flora on it or something like that. If you're doing lavender ones, maybe you might want to put a tiny bit of lavender on the side. Just a tiny weeny bit just to show what it is. It's more like a feature. It's not going to kind of do too much rather than be a feature of it. And you can probably see how I'm holding it with my finger through the donut hole. Um, it's that way you're sort of not really touching anything else because you don't want a finger mark in it or anything like that. But you'll probably have a better container than me. But <laughs> for this video, I thought, look, we'll just do this. And then, of course, I do have my sphere ones. Now, what I actually do with these is I just dip these ones, you know, like I said, just kind of go around in circles. So then they look like this. And then I would put these straight back into a tray. So I do have my floating trays here. And so once they're like that, I will literally sit them just like that. So I'm just going to put these, which you won't be able to see them because I'll be off camera, I think, just a tiny bit on this, on my scale. Because if I didn't do this with these ones, these ones would be a little crazy. But we might actually put um, a little bit of flora on the top of these ones. So this is just some calendula petals that I'm going to use. And you can just pop something on those to make them look a bit cute. So that's literally all I'm going to be doing because these ones are a little tropical one. Um, and then I will be, like I said, um, with those particular ones, just doing a drizzle. I'll also do a drizzle on the round ones, but we'll get going with these ones first. In between um, doing these as well, do make sure you kind of mix it or swell your mixture around because I can see that mine is starting to get a little thick. If it gets too thick, you can pop it back in the microwave as well. So... Um, yeah just to kind of loosen it off a bit because you're doing it a bit thicker so it will um, it will kind of thicken up a tiny bit and yeah that's it I mean they look so so cute so I will show you a finish up picture at the end 
once I do them all, I'll show you a finish up one. Then all you're going to do is just leave these to sit here. Um, so I would actually leave these to sit for maybe, um, you know, an hour or two, and then you could package them up. Anyway, I'll let you, um, I'll let you go for a minute and I'm going to come back and show you the end result. And I'm sure you're going to think they look amazing. All right, everyone. So I'm back again. So as you can see to the side, I've done the little balls. And then from here, we do have our sweet little donuts. So now I wanted to show you something as well. If you have a look at this, can you see those little lumps? That's because I didn't mix the bicarb in that enough. But for me, I don't care because I think it does look like little sprinkles underneath. So now in here, I do have um, some more mixture of a bit of orange. And then I'm just going to be popping this orange over the top. You can just run it up and down with a spoon. And if you can see how cute that looks, it really does look nice. I also have these um, that I'm throwing away. These are tiny little... Um, uh, what are they? Pineapples. So I'm just going to put one on each one just to make it so that we can see it is a tropical um, little one. And I mean, look how cute these look. I think they're just so cute. I really, really do love them. And, um, you know, every child will see these and of course will adore them to us, well, mums and dads. I get lots and lots of ladies and I'm actually starting to get lots of ladies in their 60s that are buying bath bombs and they just said it's just a little relax a little time just for them so i actually think that's a great idea as well but like i said you can put you know some um sparkles or you can put some leaves i mean you can put anything on it really and some sprinkles but you know do do it straight away because they won't stick if you try and do it even you know 30 seconds later if they dry quite fast so you definitely do need to get onto them really fast but, and, and of course your mixture will start to dry up as well. And you can see underneath here, I do have some baking um, paper as well. Um, and do remember too how I said keep mixing it. So like in between, just mix it so it doesn't thicken up um, too much as well. But yeah, as you can see, they look really sweet. And I'll get going with these. I'll put a tiny bit onto, um, you know, the little ball ones. But... Other than that, we're actually done. So thank you everyone for listening. Hopefully I've been helpful for you today. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.